Okay, now that my old timing belt is off, it is time to put my new timing belt on. And here I have the Continental Pro Series Plus timing belt kit. I, you've seen me use this before. I, I like this brand a lot. You can actually buy this on Amazon. However, I the company that produces this doesn't do a very good job of like advertising it on Amazon. They only put the kit number. They don't actually put what it's for. So it's actually even difficult for me to sometimes pick it out on Amazon. So I'll link it in the description below. Maybe I should tell them about that. Or write them an email. But here is the part number. PP271LK3. And this is just great because it has like everything that you need, basically. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously it has the belt and you know, like 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 most timing belt kits, it has the markings for the cam and the crank pulley on there. So just sort of helps with double checking your work, you know? Then also have a brand new water pump. And I love this because it has the metal impeller, which is imperative. Now there's two different styles of water pumps, one with the bypass and one without the bypass. So if you don't know, just take a quick check and you can clearly see that mine has the bypass. So order accordingly. This kit also comes with the associated O-ring and gasket, of course, cam and crank seal, roller, tensioner, and tensioner. Everything that you need. Ooh, a new timing belt sticker. Excellent. Can't wait to put that on. It's gonna feel really good. And then, of course, the directions. I mean, Hopefully you don't need it. Because that's what this video is for, right? So now that we have the timing belt off, we're gonna go ahead and remove the number two and number one idler pulley that are associated with the timing belt. So here's the number two. And even though later on I sort of feel this and it feels really good still, another one came in the kit that's new and good. So I'm just going to replace it at this time. Now I have my 10 millimeter Allen key or hex socket that I'm using to remove the number one idler pulley. And you can see this is right above the tension. Jesus, good Lord. Someone, oh God, whoever did this job before me over torqued everything so extreme. So I have my massive breaker bar right now. You can't even see how big it is because it just goes higher than the camera. Okay, so there we go. Taking this one off. Torque spec for this is incredibly low and someone, I don't even, let, let's not go there. <laughs> So now inspecting this for wear, I'm looking at the surface that I'm also feeling for any looseness in the bearing. And what I feel is basically nothing. You want to have a little bit of resistance. You want it to not spin freely and you also don't want to feel any crunchiness in the bearing. This bearing, just like the number two roller bearing, felt awesome, but I decided to replace it anyways because I have one in the kit. Now moving on to the water pump and the thermostat outlet housing. And I have my 12 millimeter socket. Yay! Oh, my little ratchet, my little tip tool <laughs> and once again make sure that your drain pan is still underneath all right getting that guy out of the way move and a little flathead screwdriver to pop out my old thermostat if you've never replaced a thermostat before which hopefully you have uh, before attempting your timing belt <laughs> make sure that you note the position of the little floater because it's probably not what you expect we'll get to that later now i'm gonna remove the hose clamp from my bypass tube, the bypass tube I was talking about earlier. Make sure you order the right water pump. And I love these pliers. These are like one of my favorites. Get off there, okay. <laughs> I love the Toyota Long Life Red Coolant too. It looks like it's bleeding. Now I'm, you do not have to remove this in a star pattern. I, I Sometimes I just get obsessive about stupid things and all right i'm removing this in a star pattern whatever uh 12 millimeters once again and all of these bolts the same length so just set them aside in a magnetic tray and don't worry about it someone put a little too much sealant on this so i'm just prying gently from a couple safe locations on either side to pull it off and you can see this old water pump use the paper gasket and sealant what the heck all right whoa 
look what we got here. Everything's off. And here is my brand new number two roller. Fantastic. And I will be installing this, feeling it, of course. And one thing I noticed between old and new was that when I spun the bearing, it did not spin for quite as long. <laughs> so I can tell if there's more grease in there and so on and so forth. And we're going to tighten this down and we're going to torque it. Yeah. Now that I've got my center idler pulley installed, I'm just going to torque it to 30 foot pounds. So again, with my 14 millimeter socket. Ooh, feels nice. Before installing my new water pump, I cleaned the gasket ceiling surface a little obsessively. There's a few tools that I use to clean up the water pump gasket ceiling surface. This one just is a plastic razor blade. So on surfaces that are super sensitive or aluminum, I'll use something like this. The razor blade on a scraper for the large section. For the smaller sections, I use a flathead screwdriver to get off some of the material. Um, I also have this gasket scraper that I used. And then lastly, I took some brake clean and I soaked my little 3M pad with it. So I got my rag, I got my 3M abrasive pad and just a little bit. And then I just went over the surface and made sure that every little last bit of gasket material is gone. Why? Because it would totally suck to put everything back on and then see that my water pump's leaking and then I have to do it again. That's just freaking lousy. So. <laughs> how good it looks. Just make sure that there is no old gasket material there. And then I did a final rub down with brake clean just so that there's no oil or coolant residue left. Oop, I'm gonna have to, gonna have to do that spot again. If you wanna use the paper gasket that comes in the kit, that is 100% okay. But when I come across something like this, I. I just use Fippage. I don't know, I've been doing it the same way for so long and it's never failed me. Somebody use Fippage. F-I-P-G, form in place gasket. That's where Fippage comes from. <laughs> Fun fact. This is Seal Packing 103. And on the packaging, which mine uh, is destroyed, so oops, there goes the little thingy. The little thingy. Uh, <laughs> whoops, I'll put that back on there. Mine says, here we go, part number 00295-00103 for oil pan slash camshaft housing for professional use only. That's right, you aren't professional, you can't buy this. Uh, no, you can get this at the dealership. So, it, it, so even though it says for oil pan and camshaft housing, I've, I've used this on water pumps a bunch and this is the Toyota way. Ooh, I got a chunk. And this stuff, you actually, like, as soon as you put it on, there's, like, a time limit for it. So you don't want to let it air out for too long. <laughs> I think the chicken's communicating with a little birdie friend she made. <laughs> Got my 12 millimeter on my little shorty here so I don't over tighten them. Obviously installation is the reverse of removal.
Now I'm going to install the roller part of this tensioner only. You can see I put a little bit of anti-seize in that pin there, and the washer does have a right and a wrong side. Make sure that the sharp edges are pointed towards the engine. And the torque specification for this one is a little bit less than this one. This is only 26 foot pounds. I actually forgot, I had to look it up. I think that has to do with it going through the aluminum housing for the oil pump. And that's it, not much at all. Weef. <laughs> Torque specs are so much lower than people think. All right, now it's time for me to put the belt on. Now you can probably tell that that looks a lot cleaner. Look how clean it is. I replaced my crank seal. I didn't include that in this video. I probably should have filmed it, but after the situation with the cam pulleys, I, I, <laughs> I just destroyed the tool. So, Gonna skip that step. And then having to take the torch out for the little tensioner bolts, I was like, this is probably gonna be a disaster and it ended up not being a disaster. So uh, I probably should have filmed it, but I didn't. Sorry guys. Now, one thing I noticed that was interesting is if you are gonna be using the instructions that come with the kit, which I don't recommend, I recommend using the factory Toyota instructions, which is what I'm using, but uh, I did, I was looking at the, the belt and I saw this note here, ensure the arrow mark on the belt is pointing away from the engine. That's interesting because I looked on the belt and let me know if y'all see it, but I'm not seeing any arrow, right? No arrow. So I'm just gonna use my best judgment. If the first time I put it on is wrong, I'll just put it back on a different way. <laughs> So we've got, as you saw as I rotated it around, we've got a couple marks. These two that are closest together are going to be for our cam pulleys, and they're going to be lining up with the timing marks on the camshaft sprockets. Oops, let me turn the body. There we go. And then down here, this should be lining up with the mark on our crank sprocket. So let's see how this goes. I'm also going to have the words facing towards me. I always start on the side of the engine that is the non-tensioned side. So you saw me pull the tensioner off of right here. Notice I haven't put it on yet. I'm just going to leave this roller here for now and I'm going to make sure that the proper tension is on this side, the non-tensioned side. And then of course we'll be picking up slack on this side. So any leftover looseness is going to be okay on this side. So that's going to be my safe side. So I'm gonna start by placing one of my marks. Let's see, one, there's the other. I'm gonna start by placing the mark on my driver's side cam gear, like so. And then I'm going to just make sure that all the teeth are happy on the gear and put that over the water pump and let that hang down like so, just for the time being while I set up. The other side there. Okay, so it does feel a little loose, but it looks like this one has moved a little. All right, and now for the crank. So I move my crank pulley bolt and my guide washer. Set those aside. All right, and now on this side. Okay, and here I got my timing belt on, and you can see I've got like this guy lined up with this line, with that, da, 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 da. You can see there's a bunch of looseness right here, obviously, because my tensioner is gonna go here and take up the slack, but I've got it nice and tight here, but not too tight, obviously. Nice and tight here, nice and tight here. This also feels good. And then now I'm gonna install this tensioner. It should take up the slack here, and we should be good to put it back together. So here is my old tensioner. <laughs> and here is my new tensioner and here is one of my old bolts and I was thankfully able to snag another bolt off of my spare engine that wasn't entirely destroyed. Okay, I just put my tensioner in place. And I did that just by putting in that outer bolt and threading it on just a little bit. And now I'm gonna do that inner bolt. And here I am underneath my truck and you can see my long extension and 
you can see I've got my tensioner going on. Whee! So I am just slowly tightening the inside bolt, not all the way, <laughs> just a little bit until I see that. Okay, now I'm gonna tighten the outside bolt by hand. Okay, and then a little more on the inside bolt and a little more on the outside bolt. And now that they're both snugged by hand, I'm gonna do my final 20 foot pounds of torque. I'll show you my setup. I've got my torque wrench with my long extension. And then on the very tippy top, I've just got this little 12 millimeter, my little shorty 12 millimeter socket. And I've got this on a little wobbly and that works out so freaking great for me. I like this because it doesn't have a ton of motion. It has just enough. Okay, and now I can pull my pin <laughs> and I should have the same amount of awesome tension all the way around. It feels really good. It feels great, but I won't know for sure until I turn the engine over a couple times. 19. And I'm gonna do two full revolutions. Okay, so now that I've turned it over literally like a million times, more like 20, uh, let's see how our timing marks did. Okay, now I'm gonna double check. And of course, your lines are never gonna line up again, so don't worry about that. Looks good, and my tension. I'm gonna say it's good. Now I'm gonna put everything back on and uh, show you my new homemade tool. Okay, there we go. And then I'm just gonna grab, I mean, this is kind of excessive, but I just wanna make sure it's in there really good. And now I'm gonna grab my torque wrench set to 217 foot pounds. I'd be lying if I said that didn't feel really good. <laughs> new new torque wrench and new tool for the win. Hell yeah. All right, let's get to the rest of this job. And there you have it. My timing belt is on. Obviously, installation of everything else is the reverse of removal. You probably don't care about seeing me do that. I don't know, maybe you do. If you do, leave a comment below. But obviously, I see how much of my videos y'all watch. You never stay around for the install part because it's identical. Of course, there is the last finishing touch, which is, it's like the cherry on top, y'all. You get this little sticker in the kit. And then put the date and the timing belt installed and your next replacement. And then, if you're proud of your work like I am, I always like to put my name on these. All right, y'all, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it helpful. And if you did, leave me a, a positive comment below. If you hated this video, stop watching my videos. All right, see you next time. Bye. So cuddly, so soft.